All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Kathy Davis, who is on the other side of the country in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. How are you doing, Kathy? I'm great, John. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. And uh, and, and Kathy, uh, Kathy has a has an organization. It's Veg Inspired is the brand, plant-based life coach and recipe developer, CEO of Veg Inspired. And what we're going to talk about today is healthy habits for for, for entrepreneurs. And uh, and we're going to talk about this from the perspective of plant-based foods. So, um, Kathy, let's get straight into it. What, what, why do you why do you think particularly like for entrepreneurs or uh, or people like that why do they need to have healthier diets Oh gosh John you know one of the big things that I learned running my own business is the more I showed up the more I gave to other people the more I stepped into fulfilling my mission the more tired I got and in the beginning I thought that was just that was just the name of the game. That was just the way it was. But when I started to tweak the foods that I ate, especially for breakfast and lunch, I noticed I had more energy. I noticed I wasn't hitting the vending machines, which for me was just the cupboard because I'm not, I work in the house um, or grabbing coffee mid afternoon. I was able to sustain that energy and really show up for my business, my clients and myself to fulfill this mission. And that's why I think it's so important that we have healthy habits and that we prioritize taking care of ourself because we all know you can't fill somebody else's cup if you don't first fill your own and, and really leveraging the power of food and these healthy habits so that we can show up as our at our optimum performance and just really crush those goals yeah no it's an interesting i, I mean i agree with you totally and and uh, and i think more than ever i i think the last couple of years have taught us that that healthy uh, healthy mind, healthy body, you know, mind, body, they go together and that you can't be, you know, you can't be uh, focused on one area of your life and, and, and not give yourself all the opportunities from for setting yourself up as best you can. So tell me about the the energy piece, because there's probably some people listening who go, I, 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 I wouldn't get this sustenance. I wouldn't get the energy and that from from plants. So the big thing that I learned was we need those unrefined starches because the unrefined starches convert to energy. But the key is eating ones that have the sustained burn. So those simple starches, the ones, the carbs that everybody tells you are bad, the donut's not going to give you energy. You know, the refined pasta, probably not energy, probably why you do feel icky after, but a nice sweet potato, a baked potato, really leaning into the foods that do burn slower in your body so that you can have that energy. And then adding in high fiber, high water content, fruits and vegetables. You know, I always tell people like eating more plants isn't just eating salads. It's really eating quinoa and seeds and almonds and you know, dried fruit and fresh fruit and, you know, whole grains like brown rice and farro and uh, other vegetables, greens, beans, you know, we always forget about beans, but having roasted chickpeas or adding chickpeas to your salad in the middle of the day can really pack in that perfect little blend of protein and carbohydrate to, to sustain you. And, you know, if you're like me, you shut down your computer at night and you head into the kitchen previous to this, I would be munching all night at dinner or before while I was making dinner. And now it's like, okay, I can just focus my energy on making dinner and eating this really nourishing meal that might be, you know, baked potatoes and lots of veggies with a barbecue sauce or a burrito bowl with brown rice and beans and fajita veg and ta uh, avocado or guacamole and pico de gallo and really all those yummy foods that we love that give us that energy. Yeah. And uh, one of the other things I think probably some people listening are going, yeah, this sounds great, but how do I, how do I fit this into my busy schedule? Because, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm at home, but maybe I'm on the road or maybe I'm, I'm going into the office occasionally or, or all the time again. And, 
how do I how do I create a, a an environment where I can do this without sort of okay I'm in the office now I have no options I'm off to the vending machine. Absolutely. That's exactly what I teach people how to do is how to make it accessible. And, you know, one of the things that I found early on was the convenience foods, high in sugar, high in salt, high in oil, they're convenient. They're mostly processed. That granola bar from the vending machine leaves you feeling groggy or hungry an hour later. So taking a step back and saying, I'm going to make my breakfast simple in the same every day. It's going to be something that has a nice whole grain, maybe oats, maybe quinoa, uh, some berries, and maybe I make it overnight. Maybe I make it the night before. Maybe I make it on Sunday and just portion it out so I can just grab and go. And then, you know, lunches can be very simple, opting for a salad, maybe pre-cooking some potatoes that you can take with you, or again, quinoa or brown rice that can easily be packed in go containers and just taken and warmed up at the office. And then the other thing is instead of picking the granola bar with all the processed flours, maybe opt for one that has the whole food. So maybe it's a, you know, one that has the, you can see the nuts in it. You can see the seeds or you buy a trail mix versus a granola bar. Just little tweaks like that can really help create good, healthy habits that fuel you so that you can fulfill your mission. And then I always say like, let's not deny that mother nature makes fruit in perfect little packages to travel with us. I know that thinking about eating an apple is not nearly as exciting as thinking about eating a bag of potato chips. But when you start to shift your mind toward feeding yourself the foods that are going to make you have the energy to run your business, create the kind of impact in the world that you want, that shift in thinking allows you to make these choices easier. And then the other thing we haven't talked about is water. Bring your refillable water with you. You should be super hydrated all day. It helps with your skin. It helps with your energy. It also gets you up and moving, right? Because then you have to use the bathroom. Um, So you're not just sitting sedentary at your desk all day. You're actually getting up and moving around, which keeps the blood flowing, keeps the energy going. And, you know, the hydration just keeps all of our organs working better as well. Yeah, so just coming back on one point you made earlier, just um, about the granola bars, not to not to bag on granola bars, but but I think to some degree uh, it's an education process, isn't it? Because people may think, well, a granola bar that's a ha- that's healthy. I'm I'm grabbing something that's healthy as opposed to grabbing a candy bar. I'll grab a, a, a granola bar. So I think there's a lot of education here about really understanding what is healthy and what actually maybe looks healthy but actually isn't. Yes. And one of the things that I always like to remind people is we're always being marketed to. So that granola bar that says whole grain may not actually be whole grains. It may be grains that have been pulverized completely to flour and all the nutrients are stripped because they want it to taste good. And then the next thing they do is they load it with salts and sugars. And I will tell you that sugar is one highly addictive too highly inflammatory. So if you do have aches and pains, or you do feel groggy or have mind fog, you know, midday, these are some ingredients that you really want to look into. And I was telling somebody, um, in a training I did a couple of weeks ago, there are six over 60 names of sugar that can be used in foods that are just as addictive as white sugar or high fructose corn syrup and things of that nature. So you know, the education piece is I'm not saying read every single ingredient label, you know, you're not make more work for yourself, but take a step back and say, what's my goal in this? And one of the things I teach my clients and people in in my space is eat more foods as close to nature intended. So that's where I was talking about like the granola bar that might be like the pulverized wheat product with, you know, mashed berries and a bunch of other fillers versus a whole food where you can see the nuts, you can see the seeds, you can see the dried cranberries or the raisins and just looking at it differently. And then also thinking like where a trail mix, you can actually see those in, you can actually see the foods just check to see if they add sugar. Sometimes they coat the whole thing in sugar and you're just eating a sugary mess anyway. You could make your own trail mix with whole nuts and seeds and dried fruit that's going to satisfy you and give you more energy too. So it is being aware of the ways we're marketed to. 
Yeah. And then I think, uh, I mean, I think from a business point of view, as you said at the beginning, I think the more energy, the more focus you have, obviously, the better you're going to be able to execute on whatever tasks are in front of you. And and I guess a lot of people, as you said, breakfast is a, is a really important. I mean, a lot of people like either skip breakfast or grab and go breakfast or whatever. I mean, it's it's almost like, you know, breakfast has gotten relegated to an afterthought. Definitely. And even for me, sometimes, you know, you roll, you know, I work at home, I get out of bed, I do my morning routine, I sit down at the computer, I get sucked into emails, next thing I know, it's meeting back to back. And I'm like, dang, I didn't eat breakfast. What do I have accessible that's a whole food or it's close to nature intended that I can eat right now to satiate me? And some tips that I have is, you know, if you love smoothies, make your smoothie the night before. So all you have to do is buzz it up real quick in your blender, and then you can drink it on the go or make the, like I said, the quinoa or the oats, make them ahead of time. So it is easy. Maybe you make yourself a veggie breakfast burrito with rice and beans and lots of veggies that you roll up and you just have to microwave real quick on the go. Maybe it's an oat, oats that you put together at the office, you know, thinking about ways that you can make it easy but accessible. Because a lot of times that's the reason we don't eat it is because it's too hard. It's not convenient. You know, you think about cereal, you could dump it in a bowl, pour some milk on it and call it a day. But like to have to cook a breakfast is just, it just doesn't fit in the cart. So really looking at it from fueling your body from the beginning of your day so that you can have the energy so that you are, you know, a lot of times it's like training like an athlete. Athletes training for the Olympics, don't skip meals. They don't eat junk. They feed their body for the body that they, that they want and for the energy that they want. If you want to be a business Olympian, you want to feed your body like an Olympian does. So, you know, stepping into that frame of mind as well and not skipping lunch, not having a light lunch because you think that's the option and then feeling icky later in the day. Yeah, because let's face it, a lot of people fall into that trap where they think if, if I don't eat breakfast and I have a light lunch, um, therefore, I'm I'm keeping myself um, fit or healthy or weight. But the reality is then you just get hungrier and hungrier and you eat more in the evening. How about, though, people when say people who are back out and about doing stuff, you know, they they have to move about during the day. I mean, that's obviously fast food is very, very convenient from that. How do you counteract that if you're, you know, on constantly on the go or if you're traveling through airports, all of that kind of thing? That that's a really good question because there are so many of us that travel for work and that we, you know, we are on the go and we are at the, at the whim of the foods that are convenient. You know, you're in the airport and it's fast foods or, you know, junky concession stands and things of that nature. I always tell people to really look for the best option in your current situation and take some things that you can, that you can have as a snack. Maybe it's, maybe it is the apple, maybe it is a banana, maybe it is nuts. Um, definitely staying hydrated while you're traveling. And then there are, this is going to sound crazy. There are options at fast food restaurants that are more whole food. Maybe it's the salad. Maybe it's the baked potato from Wendy's. Maybe it's, you know, looking at those other options. I'm not by any means saying that fast food is healthy, but there are ways to get around it that are more plant focused so that you have the energy for the rest of their day and you're not starving. You know, one of the things I like to eat at the, at the airport is a veggie sushi because it has the vegetables. It oftentimes has the, the rice, which will keep me energized for the day. I can do a little bit of um, soy sauce and, and really just those easy things that you might not think about allow you to keep moving through the day. Or if there's a Mexican restaurant, maybe tacos with beans, uh, lettuce, pico de gallo, a little bit of avocado. You know, you're looking at more of that plant centered meal with a lot of, of a lot of foods that pack in the, the nutrient density and the energy. So what can people, uh, you know, if people want to start making this transition, um, again, I mean, I always think when it comes to things like this, it's lifestyle changing, right? It's not, it's not a diet change. It's a lifestyle change. Um, what can people expect um, to see results from this or when can they expect to see results and what do they look like so they can recognize them when they have it? That's a great question, John. I have been eating, I've been eating vegan for eight years. So those initial tweaks, I remember having more energy, feeling lighter, 
But for the last two years, I've really followed this more whole food plant-based way of eating lots of vegetables, lots of whole grain starches, minimal processed foods, minimal oils, minimal, um, you know, obviously no dairy, no eggs, no meat. And the things I noticed outside of weight loss, right? I lost 40 pounds, but besides that energy from a place you didn't even know it existed, right? I tell people, I didn't know I could feel so good until I started feeling so good. Um, the ability to excel at my job, I've, you know, scaled my business internationally. I authored three cookbooks in the last two years, like just having the sustained energy and confidence in what I'm doing and the results. One of the other things that if you are having aches and pains, if you do have acid reflux, if you are looking at a diabetes style um, illness or symptoms, you might start to see those go away or at least start to reduce because there's so many studies that are showing doctors prescribing plant-based eating or eating more plants to combat some of these standard American illnesses. And then the other thing you'll start to really see is you'll, you'll see the way that your body interacts with food changes. So certain things satisfy you more. Um, it, when you're eating more of this high fiber, you are, you feel full longer, you're satiated longer. You're not constantly hungry on this, you know, overly processed, minimal nutrient, easy, you know, quick burning foods. Yeah, no, that's, it's, it, it's really, it's really, really fascinating. And I think, uh, and maybe eye-opening for a um, for a lot of people, um, because here's the other thing. It kind of struck me. I mean, I'm originally from Ireland, but one of the things that struck me when I first came to the states is uh, all the uh, commercials that you'd see on TV saying like, "Oh, does pizza give you heartburn?" Well, now here's a new medication. And I always thought, well, if pizza gives you heartburn, probably not eat pizza, rather than something to mask the the effect that it's having on you. And so, I mean, I think we. We, in some ways, we've grown up in this in this culture where there's a way around everything instead of dealing with the actual root cause. You know, we just treat symptoms. So, like, if some foods react badly with you, hey, there's a medicine for that. Yeah, definitely, and that's one of the things that I learned too. Was, you know, if a food made me feel bad, why would I keep eating it? If if a food was giving me adverse effects, why would I keep eating it? So then I, you know, I really teach my clients like, how does that food make you feel? When you eat a big salad loaded with potatoes and a yummy seed-based dressing, how do you feel? And I mean, 100% of the time, it's they feel better. I feel sa satisfied. I don't feel hungry. I enjoy the energy that I have. And, you know, it takes, a there's a learning curve, right? Your body is used to these high fat foods, high fat ingredients, addictive ingredients that the, that the marketers and manufacturers put in. So there is a little bit of a, of a learning curve both for your taste buds and the way that you cook, but it's not impossible. And the one, if I could have one takeaway that you have is eat more plants. I am not here to say, don't eat, don't eat things. Like I am not the person that will come in and say, empty your kitchen of all the bad things. And I do air quotes because I don't like that word. Eat more plant foods, eat more of the foods that make you feel good so that when you do have that pizza that might make you feel icky, it's not a sustained icky. You just get right back on the foods that make you feel better the next day. If you are traveling in an airport and you have to eat something that doesn't always make you feel great, get right back on the train, get right back on the, on the foods that do make you feel great with your next meal and really just focus on eating more plants and the foods that make you feel good. Yeah, this is, I think great advice. And I think it's just simple advice to start with, like eat more of the stuff that makes you feel good, eat more plants. It's uh, And as I said, these things are always lifestyle changes, but they don't have to be dramatic or drastic lifestyle changes. You can just start to implement parts of it and over time, like grow it. Because uh, we always know that if somebody, if you just go for a dramatic change and say, that's it, everything's out, I'm just going to eat plants from now on, you're never going to sustain that. Exactly. And it's, it needs to be a, it needs to be a change that you're, that you're comfortable with, that you give yourself time, you give yourself space. It took me eight, it took me six to eight months to actually transition from standard American eating to more of this eat more plants, vegan lifestyle eight years ago. And it was because I was, I wasn't ready. I, 
I wasn't ready to make that change. And so you don't have to be ready. You can simply just eat more plants. Yeah, no, it, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a good, uh, it's a good piece of advice. I think for people is like, you know, remember you can just st start, start small steps. Cause that's, you know, it's all, as long as you're putting one front in front of the, and one foot in front of the other, you're making progress. Uh, listen, Kathy, this has been fantastic. All of Kathy's information is going to be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Absolutely. Thanks, John. So I'm a plant-based lifestyle coach and I serve high achieving CEOs, business professionals, and entrepreneurs in making the plant-based eating more plants way of living an intuitive way of life. We walk through systems, tools, foods and recipes, and then implementation strategies to make it work. And one of the things that I really pride myself on is connection and community. So if you are, you know, even thinking this might be a thing for you, I'd love to connect with you. You know, you can find me as John said, everything's in the, in the description below. The other cool thing is I authored three cookbooks, three plant-based cookbooks. So I have loads of recipes at my fingertips that I can share with you. And then my favorite fun fact that I always like to tell people is three years ago, my husband and I sold our house in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we traveled the United States in a fifth wheel RV. So if that piques your interest in learning more, I'm happy to connect with you on that, on that fact alone. Yeah, that's fantastic. Are you, are you in the RV right now? I am in the <laughs> RV right now, my cute little office nook. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. I love that. Uh, well, that's a whole other conversation for another day. Maybe you'll come back and talk to us about that someday. Absolutely. I would love that. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Kelly. Thank you all for watching and listening, and I'll see you all for another interview really soon.